Um, so everyone will get a link to the recording after the presentation. There'll be a lot of links shared in the chat, but don't worry about uh, copying and pasting them or anything like that because we'll send you a follow-up email with all the information so you can really just sit back and enjoy the webinar. Feel free to use the chat or the Q&A function to ask any questions that you have for our presenters. Um, and we'll have time at the end to address your questions. Um, and with that, uh, we can go on to the next slide and we'll get started. Um, so we're, first, we're going to get a, a, an overview of both NRC RIM and our partners at IDEO.org. Um, we'll give you a rundown of the Honest Conversations Toolkit, and then we'll showcase how one community-based organization was able to use that toolkit in their communities. So first, just a little bit about us. Um, next slide. NRC RIM is funded by the CDC and housed at the University of Minnesota. And while we were initially established as part of the country's COVID-19 response, we now support health departments and community organizations working with refugee, immigrant, and migrant communities that have been disproportionately affected by health inequities of all kinds, not just COVID-19. Next slide. Now we do that by strengthening partnerships between health departments and communities and by supporting organizations that work directly with refugees, immigrants, and migrants. And we do this work to ensure RIM communities have more equitable healthcare access and outcomes. So we support organizations by collecting and disseminating best practices, health communications and health education, and by offering online training such as this. Uh, we also have technical assistance and a few other services. Now, because we work with health departments and CBOs, we're kind of one step removed from the community. So we rely on our core partners to keep us informed of the challenges and successes of both workers and communities that they serve. Now, um, first I'm gonna go over a few resources that we have that really showcase the power of storytelling, which is ultimately uh, the goal of Honest Conversations. So we have one promising practice on our website that explores how the Som Somali community leaders in Minnesota really embraced word of mouth and the oral traditions in their communities to share their experience with the COVID-19 vaccine. And testimonials like these are successful strategies that portray real stories from community members that to communicate trusted information and make positive behavior changes. And we know that partnerships between healthcare providers, community-based organizations, and local leaders can identify members and develop testimonials to reach community groups with targeted stories focused explicitly on their COVID-19 vaccine experience or other experiences with health systems. And these, this, these testimonials and storytellings, they're naturally culturally and linguistically relevant because they are coming from community leaders and they're coming from the people that are directly in the communities. Next slide. Um, here's an example of a story that we felt was really impactful. Um, this came from Pastor Prince Mundeke Mushunju, and he's a refugee originally from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, who now lives in the United States. And this pastor did not believe that COVID-19 was real because of his religious beliefs. Then he, is in fam he and his family got really sick with COVID-19, and to use his words, uh, they almost died. And he had heard a lot of misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines, but as he did his own research, his views shifted. And so now he feels the responsibility to mobilize other people to get their vaccines. He's had traveled the country and the world to advocate for COVID-19 vaccines from a religious perspective. So we at NRC RIM filmed a video of him telling his story during a trip to Uganda where he preached about COVID-19 and refugee communities there. And we use the video and social media ads. We worked with our, the International Rescue Committee to distribute it to clients. And we worked with the pastor himself to distribute the video among his network. And this is an important example because we didn't give him talking points and we didn't come to him with an agenda. He had control over what he said and how the video was distributed. And we just worked to amplify his voice. Next slide. So anytime you talk about whether it's COVID-19 or another sensitive health topic, it's important to build that trust in communities. Um, 
we know that alleviating apprehensions about COVID-19 requires a trusted relationship and a safe and supportive environment for people to voice their concerns and ask questions. That's why we have conversation guides to equip readers with the skills to answer these questions about COVID-19 vaccines and participate in conversations with others. Um, but I want to be clear that the Honest Conversations campaign that you're about to hear about is more about listening than talking. And IDEO.org is going to get into that in just a moment. But if you are in a position to speak with somebody about COVID-19 vaccine concerns, we have guides to help you navigate that. Next slide. So we create these guides as new issues emerge and frame them around immigrant and refugee perspectives. You can see a list of topics here. Now, um, next slide. All of the examples that I've given so far are about COVID-19, but I know that there's a lot of pandemic fatigue right now and that there may be questions about other topics. But fortunately, storytelling strategies and these kinds of conversations can apply to other health topics. Um, we have a few resources on our website. We don't have storytelling resources to share, but we do have other resources for addressing other health topics, including monkeypox and the seasonal flu. And we know that um, COVID-19 has taught us a lot about engaging with immigrant and refugee communities, and these lessons learned should inform any public health response in the future, which is why we have resources on these pages to help you do just that. Next slide. So as you can see, storytelling can be an effective way to reach immigrant and refugee communities around health topics. Um, yet the examples I just shared around uh, the video with Pastor Prince or the Somali community in Minnesota, they weren't part of any kind of coordinated effort to capture and amplify community voices. So we partnered with IDEO.org to take these concepts and strategies to the next level. And with that, I will hand it over to them. Thank you very much, Sarita. Um, my name is Claudia, and I'm a program lead at IDEO.org. I'll share a little bit about or our organization, but I'll also share a lot more about this collaboration that we've been working on with NRC RIM, and in this case, with Canal Alliance. Um, so what is IDEO.org, who we are? Uh, we are a nonprofit design studio and our mission is to work alongside communities to build solutions for a more just and equitable world. We use an approach called human-centered design, which means that we center people who will benefit from and use the solutions as key decision makers and influencers. In this case, uh, we really believe and advocate for community-driven work, uh, which is likely very familiar to some of the people in this group. Um, what Community-driven work means that people who will be impacted by a solution aren't just input givers. They are really, uh, their voices are centered to be key decision makers and influencers and really help shape what we create. Now, for the past two years, we've been working and partnering with the with NRC REM to create toolkits to build vaccine confidence. Our mission has been to build, and what do we mean by toolkits? Um, toolkits are built um, on using Google Docs so that anybody with a Wi-Fi connection can access them for free. Um, there's no need to have any sort of fancy design software. And then in addition to that, the toolkits are all open source. So you can take them pick and select what's most effective, what's most valuable, um, and use it. Lastly, I'll point out that our toolkits are all built so that using very simple um, actions such as copy and paste or fill in the blanks, you can adapt these tools to be really resonant uh, within your community. Here you'll see a range of the toolkits that we built over the past two years. So if you're looking to increase, say, vaccine uptake um, around mothers in refugee, immigrant, and migrant communities, you might use Mothers for Mothers. Mothers for Mothers includes tools to host uh, peer gatherings around a relevant health topic. And so here you'll find, say, an agenda, uh, speaker notes, slides that you might use, a budget to help you plan a gathering. Um, if you're looking to build vaccine confidence among your community broadly, you might use vaccination is. Vaccination is is a series of templates um, to build posters, social media posts, um, comic strips, um, all um, 
engaging your community around the vaccine. If you're looking to do events in person and want to make your space culturally inclusive to, to the communities you serve and make sure that the space is really culturally affirming, you might use our Healthy Spaces Toolkit. And finally, if you're working with youth um, to um, engage in no judgment or judgment-free conversations around the vaccine, you might use no judgment. And no judgment is a toolkit that highlights different materials to practice, model, having judgment-free conversations about a health topic. Now, finally, if you want to develop materials that acknowledge doubt and that really highlight stories from within your community and that amplify those individual experiences, we encourage you to use Honest Conversations. Now, what is Honest Conversations? Honest Conversations is a modular toolkit that helps organizations create messaging around a particular health topic. What's special about Honest Conversation is two things. First and foremost, um, here you'll find kind of a step-by-step -step process to capture and highlight and share uh, stories from within your community. Um, as Sarita was just sharing with the story of Pastor Prince Mundeki Mushunju, um, some of times those individual experiences from someone that is close or someone that you can relate to can really be the most compelling um, narrative towards action and behavior change. The second thing that's different about Honest Conversation is that the campaign is meant to be uh, used around a seasonal health topic. We know that health concerns evolve over time, and this campaign is designed to be reused. So for instance, if boosters and flu shots are what's top of mind in your community right now, you can use honest conversations in support of those um, issues now, and then perhaps in the spring, you can use them again um, for running a campaign around high blood pressure or a different topic. Um, Honest Conversations was created in the fall of 2022. By this point, COVID fatigue was really prevalent. Um, there was a lot of messaging um, that was, you know, get vaccinated, get vaccinated, get vaccinated. And we realized as, as the pandemic evolved that the call to action also needed to evolve. Therefore, we set out to really build a campaign that was adaptable and that uh, focused on adaptable communication and that also helped to emphasize that people's opinions about a health topic can change over time and to make that change of opinions okay. Now, in order to build um, Honest Conversations, we partnered with Canal Alliance. Canal Alliance is an amazing organization uh, based in San Rafael, California. Canal Alliance describes itself as a champion of immigrants who are challenged by a lack of resources in an unfamiliar environment. Um, they are amazing and they are also here today. So you'll hear from them shortly around their experience of creating and using uh, this campaign in collaboration with us. Additionally, we wanted to ensure that we were um, really including the voices of the canal community in the creation of this campaign. And to do so, uh, we partner with eight members of Voces del Canal. Um, Voces del Canal is a coalition of leaders and Latina immigrants uh, that really help advocate for their community. You can see their pictures here. Our eight co-designers were working alongside us every step of the way. And most importantly, they're advocates and have a lot of experience going door to door within their community to talk uh, to their neighbors about the COVID-19 vaccine. So they have, you know, real pulse on what's going to resonate, what's not going to resonate. This work really wouldn't be possible without them. And in fact, the ideas and solutions presented here um, come from a lot of these individuals. Now, what is Honest Conversations? Honest Conversations is a campaign um, that is built along four steps. The first step is to set the foundation um, where you help identify what's the relevant health topic that you want to focus this, con this campaign around. Is it um, the booster? Is it monkeypox? and so on. Secondly, the second step of this campaign is to gather stories. And here we provide you with a step-by-step -step process to engage your community and to capture um, their experiences and their, um, yeah, their experiences of this health topic. The third step is to make and share. During make and share, we provide resources to help you express those stories within posters, within social media assets. assets. We also provide frameworks that you can use to uh, promote these stories and to share them throughout your community. And then lastly, this last step is reflect and evaluate. And here we provide tools to help you measure the impact and to reflect on how this past iteration of the campaign went in case you want to do it again in the future around a different topic.
Now, before I hand it off to Riddhi, who will share a little bit about the campaign and how it works, I just want to highlight uh, some of the example outputs, some of the things that you'll be able to build using these tools. So a lot of the Honest Conversations tools are focused around fill in the blanks. We found fill in the blanks to be really powerful because it provides people for a framework to share and to frame their experience. So for instance, you might use this fill in the blank process to capture someone's experience about COVID-19, and then you might take that story and then create it into a beautiful poster that is then perhaps posted around a bus station in the community where people can really engage it and see it and see their own stories really highlighted. Additionally, we'll provide tools so that you can create those same stories and publicize them as, as social media posts or as videos. Now, without further ado, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Rithi, who'll share a demo of how to use the tools in the toolkit. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much, Claudia. And uh, as I get my screen shared. Um, I just want to introduce myself quickly. My name is Riddhi Arun and I'm a program manager at IDEO.org. And so the playbook that we'll share with you today is really a step-by-step -step guide for organizations who want to create their own Honest Conversations campaign in your communities. And so as Claudia just mentioned, there's four different steps and each step is broken into four mini PDFs with each PDF representing one step of the phase or the campaign cycle. So with that, I will transfer over to the NRC RIM website where you can find all of these playbooks and PDFs with all of the tools linked inside of them. So in step one, which we're calling set the foundation, you'll use this to decide which health topic your campaign will cover. So like Claudia said, that might be boosters and flu shots for this next three months, and it might be something else in the, in the upcoming six months. And the idea is that you can reuse and recycle these campaigns. And so in step one, as Claudia mentioned, um, just want to highlight one of the worksheets that are in that's in this playbook. So once you open up um, step the um, playbook one, you'll find uh, a couple of worksheets that you can use to pick your season topic, for example, this page. In playbook two, this is really where you'll, where you'll start to gather stories from the community. We have guidelines, worksheets, and templates to help you really gather stories from the community. And when you click on these, this link, it'll open up the playbook. Um, and this is an example of the fill in the blank worksheet that you can use to either print this out or have people share verbally um, to fill in the blank of this story. And it's really nice because as Claudia mentioned, there's kind of a consistent narrative that you then gather when you're asking each person to fill out the same fill in the blank worksheet. The third step of the playbook is make and share. And this is really where you'll get into um, making all of those beautiful assets that Claudia was just showing us. And so you can open up this playbook, but we NRC RIM has also created quick links to all of the different templates and videos that are available for you to use. So I'll take you through an example of one template. You'll see here template for promotion posters. Once you click on that link, you'll be directed to a page that looks like this. And for every template that's available on the NRC RIM website, um, you're directed to something where you'll see this um, blue button in the top right corner. And once you select that button, it makes a copy for yourself in your, in your own Google Drive. And so each template has a couple of pages at the top, just a little bit of introduction about what this template is and what you can do with it. A page to show you the different options that you have. We have a couple of different visual options for each template. Each template also has a how-to video that walks you through the steps of how to use this, which I'm walking you through now. Some guidelines to ensure that your posters and your templates and your assets are readable. And then you'll get into the templates themselves. And so you'll see here that each um, version of the template, each option has uh, kind of like in instructions on the side so that you will be able to do this on your own and it'll take you less than 10 minutes to complete one of these. And so, for example, the first instruction is to update the season topic. You can change this to whatever you like, whatever your season you've decided alongside your community that you're focusing on. You can edit the description. You can input details. For example, this is a promotional poster, so you might put in the details for an event that you're hosting in your community. Um, and you can update this logo, delete this, and insert your own or you can simply delete it and choose not to have an, a logo. And the final step will be to export it. So you'll go to file, download, and PNG image, 
and you'll have a poster that's ready to print. I'll walk you through one more example because this particular template also has um, some options with images in it. And so for options with images in it, if you're looking to insert an image from your own community, a picture that you've taken and have consent to share, you can right click and select replace image and upload from your computer. Or we also have options in slide 23 here where you can simply scroll down or click that link. And you can see from a couple of different options that are all open source, free to use images. So for example, if I copy, go back up to the poster I was editing and paste, I can just drag it into the same spot where the other image is and use that if I feel that more represents my community. So that's just an example of some of the templates that are available to you in the make and share step. And the final step of the playbook is called reflect and evaluate. And this is really where you can reflect on and measure your impact, create visuals to showcase your work and announce the end of the campaign on social media. And so I'll walk you through one example of a tool here called the data collection tool. So once you click on this, you'll be directed to a page that looks like this. And in, again, in the top right corner, you'll see a button that says use template. Once you click on that, it'll create a copy in your own Google Drive for you to edit. And in this template, you'll start here. It kind of gives you some instructions on how to use the data collection tool. You can go to the data page where you can start to collect all of the information, all these um, quantitative data points around how your campaign is doing. And there's also a summary slide which helps you sort of report back your campaign impact to partners using visual templates and also just summarizing these this impact on social media. And so with that, just to give you a quick highlight of some of the tools that are available and how you might use some of the templates that are available, um, we wanted to share that. But without further ado, I want to hand it over to my colleagues at Canal Alliance who helped co-create and use these um, this toolkit in their own work. So I'll, with that, I'll pass it over to my colleagues at Canal Alliance. Thank you, Riri. Thank you so much. Um, we're glad to be here and hoping to share with you a process that might help you on your own um, selection of campaigns and just implementing these tools. So um, Canal Alliance, we're a... Um, agency and nonprofit agency in San Rafael, California. We're just celebrating our 40 year anniversary. So we, we are a trusted uh, voice amongst our immigrant Latino undocumented um, community. And as such, you can see here, the CBOs are our collaborators and our supporters who we rely on in order for, um, you know, messaging and making sure that our immigrants are, are educated, uh, informed, keeping them safe, and most of, them, most of it, listen to their stories, listen to them, and meet them there with their needs. Um, partnerships that are essential for us are the one with IDEO, with the County of Marin, with Marine Health and Human Services, and other, uh, the California Department of Public Health. All of this, uh, people, all the these organizations, all the logos that you see on your screen are those that are involved right now in the campaign that we're about to present to you. Uh, next slide, please. So the implementation process, again, uh, it, we rely heavily on uh, our collaborators and our stakeholders. And um, we need these anchor organizations in order to move our mission forward. And these are who we really rely on. Um, next slide. We chose Honest Conversations as part of the module that IDEO created for us, uh, focusing mostly on COVID-19 boosters. Uh, we're at a midpoint actually of this uh, project and we are happy to say that we're the first ones to launch this campaign and uh, with this toolkit. And we, the reason why we picked this topic is because um, Marin County is one of the highest vaccinated counties amongst the Latino community where our booster numbers are down. Um, for vaccinations, it's a 98% vaccine rate, but for boosters, we don't even get to 10%. So we identified that it was really important to focus on that aspect of, uh, of the Honest Conversation campaign. Next. So setting the foundation, um, we realized for us that the coming of the holidays in the past two years has meant that there's a spike in numbers. So how could we keep our familias saludables, our healthy, our families healthy? 
Um, again, you know, there, the small numbers of boosting uh, were a concern and the COVID cases usually rise in the winter. So we decided to create this campaign to span four months and to launch it with an education campaign among students. I'll get more into that in one of the next slides, but it was just important for us to underscore health guidelines and resources. Um, next slide. So this is our timeline so far. This is where we at. So we launched and we started working with these tools um, October 3rd. Um, and October 31st marked our first presentation to students in our OAP program. Canal Alliance has an after-school program where we uh, assist kids with uh, homework and we guide them through middle school, high school, through college. And uh, one of the directors of the education department came up to us and asked us if we could have a presentation just to keep our kids um, informed. We identified that it was important to use students as trusted messengers because a lot of times the students speak in the native language of their parents, which at times is not even Spanish, their, their first language, but it's their second language. They might have a dialect. So we decided it was important to use the students as the communicators. And, um, and so we launched that October 31st. Now in November, you see on December 15th, uh, we're here on the webinar, just sharing this with you. And we're also having a, an event at the food pantry at Canal Alliance where we have a chalkboard with, um, we call it chalkboard, with posters based on this um, Honest Conversations campaign. So people who are going through the line are writing, are recapturing their stories. We're capturing their sentiments about the booster, about how they feel about COVID. Um, we are hoping that by December, uh, we'll start doing um, radio promotion events um, our goal is to collect all these stories and hold a community fair on December 17th. So it's not only about teaching the students, but evolving it amongst, um, you know, all this time, these four months. So we can then invite uh, other community um, organizations to partake with us at a community fair and still and have a mobile unit there where we'll, we'll boost people and we'll even um, give the flu vaccine and have music and everything. So there's a continuity from the launching of this campaign through the students and then having the community fair and eventually evaluating our impact. Next slide. So I touched up a little bit on this, the, the importance of gathering stories. So we are hoping that we reach 90 families from our up trusted messenger students um, and imagine the impact that would have if then these families go ahead and, and talk to other people around the importance of the vaccine. Uh, the food pantry that I was mentioning, um, we see between 200 and 300 families a week. So by having this chalkboard with honest conversations, capturing all that they're thinking, it's a way for us not only to gather information, but to listen to them, to have them explore that. Um, the other uh, thing that we're implementing uh, through gathering stories, the gathering stories portion of this, is that our community leaders, our health workers, go uh, from house to house. That's the photo in the middle on the bottom of your, your screen. And they talk to people uh, face to face. And if they're willing to share their stories, we'll capture those. But we also ask them to identify 120 community leaders that are recognizable in the community. And why is that important? Because for our community fair, we want to collect all stories, showcase all stories, but also highlight those from our the people that are iconic in our community, whether it's the, the person that sells the mangonadas or the, the gentleman that sells the corn, the elote in the corner. And if they share their stories, then it has more resonance with our community. Next slide. Make and share. So right now we've, all, we've hit midpoint there. We created some uh, posters for the students to capture the stories on our, our two presentations that we had um, in October. Uh, there was another one in November and we brought some incentives. I'll show you more about um, in pictures that we have further down the line. But the idea is that for the community fair on December 17th, we want to create banners, papel picado style, we want to have large format posters to highlight those um, meaningful uh, stories and display also a public chalkboard that we have been collecting from our food pantry. Next slide. 
um, reflect and evaluate. We are thinking of wrapping everything up mid-January. Uh, what we want to do is have a discussion with our team, our COVID response and our health team to see um, how we did just from the process that we handled. We want to be able to tap uh, people like the county and gather numbers to measure impact to see if the numbers of boosting went up. Uh, we also want to meet with IDEO and give them feedback of things that we've learned in the process, if there were any challenges, and then document all this data so we can share countywide and also within our agency. Um, since we're an agency that offers immigration support, social services, um, education, continued education for adults, English as a second language, we're a large organization and we need to keep everyone informed. So then everyone will be on the same page on our efforts and the results from this campaign. Next. Uh, these are just some photographs, the photographs to show you from the UP program presentation that we did with students. Uh, we have two groups, the middle school and the high school students. Next slide. And uh, if you can see here, we have our some of our team members on the one that says three putting together the goodie bags with for the students and uh, this contained a COVID kit some information how to access treatment how to um how we can help them make an appointment so if you can see the the toolkit was so great that we could even customize those little labels on the goodie bags on um the image number four where our we call that campaign with the students booster up and uh, you can see on slide two of the things that were inside it. So everything has been very um, cohesive. So the idea is that from the students, it becomes then a recognizable image to carry through October, November, December, all the way to the community fair. Next slide. Um, just to explain a little bit more about what our campaign, like the, the bones of it, um, when we presented to students, it wasn't just about capturing the stories, but we also turned it into a classroom, um, a teaching opportunity. So we went over and explained, uh, we asked them, do you know what the, is that there's treatment available for you? Do you know how much it costs? And kids didn't even know that the treatment is free, that uh, they can come to us and we can provide them with booster, um, uh, with test kits and uh, appointments for boosters as such. And uh, on slide 10, that's one of the teachers who, um, on image number 10, that's one of the teachers from the UP program that supported us during the, this presentation. Um, and so it was not only teaching them, but then involved them in the activity to fill out like little ad lib. You know, it looks like a, like an, uh, like a mad lib, we'll call it ad lib. Um, so, we capture all these stories and we told them that all of this we're going to display gallery style on our um, community fair. The reason why that was particularly important for us is that so many times kids get homework and it just gets checked and there's nev never happens after that. We wanted to give them feedback and tell them that their stories mattered. So we're going to display them all about all around the community fair. To give you an idea, we usually have between 25 and 30 participants, other CBOs. So we would print large formats of this uh, honest conversation posters at every station and making kind of like, um, um, you know, to earn credits, you know, earn a prize. If you visit six or seven booths with a big poster, um, then you'll get this reward. But it's also showcases every poster will be different with one of the stories of our community members. So it brings that sense of this happens amongst us and this is what people are talking about amongst us. And I believe that's it. Is there another slide? Um, just again, this is the uh, middle school students just filling out their uh, papers, just a close up on how we use um, the Honest Conversations uh, Mad Libs to fill out and capture these stories. Uh, if you see there's a white card on the top is because we're protecting confidentiality. Um, you know, the posters won't have the names of the kids unless once we select the uh, 20 or 30 most relevant stories, we'll ask them for um, their permission to uh, publish. And um, and I believe that's, that's it. Um, uh, all I want to say finally is that um, think of your strengths of what you're good at and uh, 
with the toolkit, it's really simple. It's self-explanatory and we can just move forward um, with a successful campaign. And we would love to report results um, when we gather all the data by January, mid-January. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Laura, for sharing. Um, we're about to transition into Q&A. And before we do, um, I just want to mention that if you are curious to use the Honest Conversations toolkits, um, we do have pilot grants that will be available. Um, these are small grants, uh, about $2,000 that can help you like print some of the materials or, uh, you know, help assist with staff time. But if you are curious to use these resources and, um, you know, as we know, resources can always be a challenge, please send me an email and we can share back a little bit about this uh, pilot grant program that we have uh, to help you access some resources to um, use this toolkit. Thanks so much, Claudia and the folks from Canal Alliance. Um, we can stop sharing the screen, have a little bit of a conversation here. Um, I'm going to be moderating the Q&A. We did have a couple questions come in for Canal Alliance through the Q&A feature. Um, Jennifer Edwards was wondering how many students were involved in your um, project with middle and high school students. I know you said that you were going to select maybe 30 stories to feature, but how many people participated in the project? Our O program has um, uh, 90 students, almost 100 but 50 of them are middle school students and 40 are high school students. Thank you. Um, we had another person ask, um, did Canal Alliance work with their local or state health department on this campaign? Both, we worked for, with both. Um, for the food truck, uh, CDPH uh, provided the, is, they're providing the food truck and uh, uh, all the, uh, personnel to help administer the vaccines and countywide uh, they also helped us and we are also part of the CRT team which is the crisis response team so they all will help with getting kits for example more to distribute at the at the fair and even throughout this whole campaign so yeah both thank you yeah, of course. There's a couple questions that came through while folks were speaking, and I just wanted to repeat them live here for anyone who maybe missed them. Um, we had a question about whether the template colors could be changed. Um, Claudia, did you want to just let people know about that? Sure. Yeah. So once you access the templates, especially the ones for posters or social media posts, there's a couple of different color treatments. Like if you want the blue to be the most prominent color or the pink or the yellow. So we've already provided some options for you. And then if you want to further edit the, the colors of the fonts, that's totally possible. If you say want to use a totally different background, you kind of have to delete the image in the background and choose your own color. So that those are some of the limitations from working with Google Docs. Um, so yes, you can edit some of the colors, um, not all of them with the backgrounds, but I would encourage you first to look at the templates and to see the various color options that we already provide. Yeah, thank you. Um, we had somebody ask if the templates were free or if there's a cost, and the answer is that they are completely free. There's no logos on them. You can use them without attribution and they're open source available on our website for you to download. So yep, no cost involved at all. Um, yeah, let me just go through, see if there's any more that came through. Um, it, you know, I, I just wanted to comment, you know, the People, somebody asking about changing the colors. And I really like that there's lots of different, there's like three or four different color options because we really kind of design this with people in mind who maybe don't have a communications department or don't have a marketing department or don't have design software. And so if you don't like the blue, you can go with the green and you can really sort of pick and choose. Um, but we had another question. Um, I actually have this question for Canal Alliance. So when you're thinking about um, as you've been designing this campaign and implementing this campaign, um, has anything surprised you or perhaps um, what advice would you give to other organizations who are wanting to do this work? 
Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, we were very surprised, as a matter of fact, that um, we thought this teaching to students was going to be a one-off. Um, but apparently, you know, the department, the education department at Canal Lines was so impressed that they asked for us to come either monthly or bi-monthly. And so there's going to be more opportunities for you, us to use this toolkits with other messaging. I know um, that we're switching right now from emergency mode to a more sustainable mode. And we are very, very interested in e equitable recovery. So we're thinking of how do we start talking about long COVID? Uh, you know, which is real. It, it has given tremendous financial scars to our community. Uh, it has impacted their their health and their way to their ability to earn wages. So, how do we turn it into that? People are interested in monkeypox, well, mpox now, and uh, and there's also things that may not be emergency, but could be something maybe about diabetes or something that affects our community, even their reticence to take the flu shot by some people. So there's so many things that we can continue. So that was a very um, welcome um, surprise that we're invited back to do it regularly. Um, in terms of um, advice, uh, tap your strengths. Do do what, what you're comfortable with, follow you know, um, your gut, uh, uh, support your mission of, of your agency. And um, small, don't wait till it's perfect. You know, it's best to launch it and to start doing it because if you wait till it's perfect, it's just not going to start, you know, start little, but just, just go ahead and, and be bold, take the step. I love that. So playing to your strengths, but also to summarize your earlier point to really listen to your community and sort of choose your topic, to designing it around what's most important to the folks that you're, that you're serving. So whether that's monkeypox or whether that is diabetes or whether it is um, even like you said um, financial wellness and things mm -hmm. like that like listening to your community and really um, really sort of uh, emphasizing like the, the flexibility that exists within these templates. Um, I'm just going to launch a quick poll but we're going to keep talking. Um, uh, one, one thing that I wanted to add that I thought was important is like the, the comfort level with these materials within your team, um, like Arandu Alvarez, who's here, who's our, our health supervisor, he has been instrumental in mm -hmm. connecting with the community. He knows the community profoundly. So he was well equipped to just take this and run with it. So I wanna thank him right here in this forum. Uh, this couldn't be possible without his help. And uh, so just, just work as a team, work on your strengths. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have any, um, like some organizations might have limited resources, limited time. I'm glad that there's the, the grants available, but there's still like time and human resources and things like that. Um, so what, um, what do you think would be the most impactful thing they could do if they wanted to run a campaign like this? And I'll pose this to Canal Alliance as well as IDEO.org. Um, I, I can start by saying that um, create a heavy and a, create a strong network with your local CBOs. Um, this community fair, again, it, it, it's easy for us to just at this point, of course, we have the trajectory of 40 years, but we, we know what we need to do and who we need to um, invite to complement our work. So, um, this campaign, believe it or not, it, it's uh, low effort, high impact, because it's already set out for you. Our overhead is really very low. Um, the pilot grant is a fantastic way to help us with all the printing, which I would say is probably the most, um, the thing that can stop you the most at some degree. Um, but um, it's our team is, even though we're a health department, our team is, is small but mighty. So you don't need a lot of assets. You don't need a lot of um, a, a huge force. You just need to network, rely on your strengths, look on the strengths of others, and uh, and just just implement it. Ruthie or Claudia, do you have anything to add? I love Laura's answers and echo everything that she said. Um, I think the one thing that I would add is 
you know, as you said, Sarita, early on, this toolkit in this campaign is really about listening, right? And so even if you don't have resources to even branch it out as a full campaign, we noticed that the act of just having a conversation with people or having a gathering and asking them to use the fill in the blanks templates, even if it doesn't then get printed into a poster, even if it's just as part of uh, a gathering that you're having or a healing circle, or even just a conversation, having that act of filling in that template and sharing with each other and sharing these experiences can both provide a framework for people to, to talk about experiences that at times can be difficult, but also it can help again to emphasize the fact that like people's opinions change over time and that it is okay for those opinions to change over time as, as we learn more, as we hear more, as we listen to, to others. Yeah, thank you. One thing I noticed about the campaign materials is that it's really kind of a choose your own adventure. Like, like you said, Claudia, you know, you could just have a fill in the blank exercise at a healing circle. So you don't necessarily have to go through and do do the big splash. You know, if you don't have a budget for printing, you could do it just on social media, you know, th things like that, where you can really just choose what's a good fit for you and your organization. And I also wanted to reflect on something Claudia was saying, you know, about people's opinions change over time. And one thing I love about the seasons is that we, it kind of really leans into the idea that change is both cyclical and inevitable. And a lot of people, you know, the change in um, COVID-19 uh, mitigation measures, uh, different rules, different recommendations from health departments, you know, all that stuff has been changing throughout the last two years. And, you know, it's can be confusing and it can kind of erode trust. But when you really lean into that, that, yeah, setting up that expectation, like, yeah, things are going to change, including your opinions about, um, about COVID-19, about monkeypox, about diabetes, about whatever health issue you're discussing. So, um, with that in mind, I have uh, another question, and um, I know Laura was talking about um, how they really want to feature all stories, like all of these stories matter, all of these experiences matter, but what do you do when you're faced with somebody who does have a lot of doubt, who um, they're filling out this fill in the blank, and maybe it's not perfectly aligning with the public health messaging or kind of what they're trying to, the you know, talk to people about? What do you do with those stories? Uh, we don't shy away from publicizing them because I think, uh, like you say, uh, opinions change. Many people were not on board in the beginning, so they might even see reflecting themselves in that. And what we do every time we, we manage information that the community trusts us to handle is like come from a place of, of non-judgment, right? Um, uh, try to bring people to the table and say, well, maybe there's more to what, what I can do for this person. They might recognize that it's their neighbor who says that. So it's all about community building and bringing unity. So we don't, we wouldn't edit out to fit, fit necessarily what we want because that's what makes us special, you know, our differences and, and finding commonality, that, that's what it's important. I think in addition to that, to what Lada said, which is a, a really important point, right, of like this is a moment for listening and understanding and hearing about other people's experiences, the campaign materials do set out um, and do prompt organizations to identify a clear call to action that's local and that's relevant. And so even if someone say experience doesn't necessarily fit into the template or doesn't align with the recommendations, there's still always that space where the call to action is clear and is um, is aligned with the public health guidance. Um, and so I think that both making space for, for that range of experiences to be voiced while also having like a clear call to action that is aligned can be really important and powerful. Yeah, and thank you. And that, I'm sorry, I just want to, and that would be part of the data, right? That would be important to evaluate and gather. Um, and then that might direct. Our, our attention to things that are maybe lacking or still need work. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that there's, like, I would caution about like republicizing misinformation, for example, but if it's really just that person's lived experience, it, you know, I, I agree with you. I mean, that part about making this campaign uh, really successful is the authenticity of the stories. And as Laura was saying, like not editing out um, 
the the stories that don't perfectly fit. So I I love that. Um, and if anyone in the audience has questions, please add it in the Q and A feature, or you can raise your hand and we'll let you unmute. Um, but I'll just keep going with some questions that I have. Um, and this one is for Canal Alliance. So I I did not know this before this webinar, but I saw that you used the the templates to make the stickers for the little bags and. I saw in one of your photos, you had it displayed on like a TV screen in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so I just, can you comment on um, how, on the flexibility, but also the ability to be creative with some of these resources and like, how did that support the overall campaign? I, I think from the get-go, we knew, speaking to what, what we were saying before, there's, there's definitely that fatigue, right? That, um, even some of the information that comes out from, from local governments and they have the same look. They're starting to have the same look. So people don't even register these things. So it was important for us. Once the genesis was to talk to students and we said, oh, let's connect it to the community fair to create a brand, so to speak. And I don't wanna sound corporate or anything, but we knew we needed something that would start being recognizable, that people, you know, I think next week we're gonna start posting things on the street promoting the community fair. So the kids who have seen it as students, they'll start recognizing the colors and they go, hey mom, look at that. So we knew that it needed to be from the goodie bags, from the PowerPoint presentation, from the posters, from the worksheets, it all had to be cohesive in order to, to look like we mean this, we're in this messaging and it's important. Um, so, so that was the, the intent. And again, we, we have a very creative group. You should see our, our um, we have a couple of offsites every now and then. And this, these are, are young people that are just like hungry to just create this and move the needle forward on these issues. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Uh, you know, I really understand the the idea of, like you really want to stand out and do something different. Um, but this, I think maybe this question is for Claudia. This wasn't the the first branding that you landed on, right? Like this was you had a few different options for branding and did some co-design. Can you speak about that a little bit? I'm happy to share a little bit about that in terms of the, the visual style and the way that the campaign looked. Um, the way that we arrived at the visual style that's currently in place was through co-design with the eight community co-designers. So I, I showed their photo. They're all, uh, you know, incredibly powerful leaders within the community who have like, again, that months and months experience of, of going door to door and engaging their neighbors in conversations around the vaccine. And basically the process of arriving at the visual style was one of starting from a bunch of different range of options and then hearing a lot of their input around like what would resonate, what would feel celebratory, what would feel distinct, uh, what elements would, you know, perhaps culturally resonate with the Canal community. And then of course, us taking a step back from what we build for the Canal Alliance and thinking about how we can create a template that's also more broadly inclusive of a bunch of different cultures. So that was the process of arriving at the branding. I also would like to add, I really loved your point, Sarita, about like earlier about not republicizing misinformation. And I would highlight that the fill in the blanks prompts like were created intentionally to capture individuals' lived experience and capture individuals' feelings without creating room or space for someone to then kind of share or broadcast inaccurate information, which is obviously something that we wanna kind of shy away. Um, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wanna comment on that or I can move on? Okay, we just have a few minutes left. And um, with this time, I, I want to talk about the idea of having a community fair. And we've seen other organizations do this around the country. You know, you're not going to have a vaccine booster event because if you think you're not eligible or if you don't want a booster, you're not going to go there. But you create a fair, you know, and somebody might go there for that. Or maybe it's not for the boosters, but just learning about um, COVID 19, whatever the topic of the season is. So, can you, Laura, talk about the value that you see in hosting a community event? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, the value is 
particularly in our case, you know, our our undocumented um, Latino community almost feels that they don't have a right to ask questions or or they're they're invisible, right? So to create an opportunity for them to gather, to come together, to see each other in, in, in a safe, uh, supportive, happy, joyful space uh, is essential. We, but to give you an idea, our community fair is not just gonna be the mobile unit giving shots and, and distributing food, but we're gonna have a piñata, we're going to have a Zumba class, we're gonna have music, we're gonna have art, uh, face painting, so who doesn't want to go to that? And if um if you get a side of a you know information and education on the booster and why it's important, and then if you're there and you don't have to go anywhere else, why not do it? We we have have had community fairs before, uh, so we are lucky enough that we have some experience on the impact it has and how successful they can be. And, and you should see it. I mean, we started talking to people about this campaign and we might, when we were like, we might be doing a community fair and people were already signing up because who goes there? The police department, uh, you know, local businesses, um, you know, any, any um, legal aid of Marin, you know, to hold a space where people might have questions about their job. Uh, they might have questions about how to apply for an employment or, or how to get off on employment. So it's a perfect canvas, a perfect opportunity for many people to share their voices. So yeah, they're, they're amazing. As long as you say, it's not just about the booster and this is what it is. And we freshened the, the, the topic and that's why the holidays are so important. It's basically gonna be a, a holiday posada. Stay away, stay, you know, stay healthy, stay ahead of the, the, the holiday, stay ahead of your um, illness, you know, be prepared. So definitely try it. It's it people will, will will chip in and will come. It's it's fun. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your advice with folks on the webinar. We're, we are out of time, um, so we'll close it out. But everyone's going to get an email later today with the recording, the slides, and links to all of the resources. And so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Yeah.